And we begin tonight in a code red weather alert as strong storms cause some damage in parts of the mid state. This is video from the Smoky Barn News showing a tree that had fallen on mobile home up in Robertson County. Quite the mess and we have not even seen the worst of the storms yet as uh, the line you see forming to our north is uh, continuing to march toward us. Code Red Chief Meteorologist Katie Morgan uh, tracking these storms and you said they were coming and here it comes. Yeah, we do. We have a couple of, that are out there and we were expecting sort of these clusters of thunderstorms, which is some of the damage you saw there. That was part of that first sort of wave or cluster that uh, has moved through and we continue to see a few of those storms in southern Kentucky. I do want to start with our severe thunderstorm watch that is in effect for our southern Kentucky counties, Trigg, Christian, Todd, Logan and Simpson counties, and that will be until two o'clock in the morning. And this will likely cover that second line that we are going to be seeing move in here as we head closer, I'd say to the maybe the 11 or midnight hour. So here's that cluster I was just talking about. Nothing severe. I do want to point out right now in Middle Tennessee, and these are going to be exiting the area. A lot of lightning with these storms, and we've seen reports up to quarter size hail with a few of these as well. It's that second line back here. Uh, that is going to be the one that we continue to monitor. In fact, a tornado warning around the Cape Girardeau area at the moment. This is that main event that we've been talking about uh, that will impact parts of Middle Tennessee as we go through the overnight. Now, I still expect the line to generally weaken after or after it begins to move into Middle Tennessee. So that cluster has been around. The main line coming in after 10, maybe even need to push that back to 11, if not midnight in some spots. Uh, but generally for now, we're looking at quiet conditions, so we still have a ways to go before that line is moved through and we're in the clear completely. Live look from our South National camera again, pretty shot here and again quiet, a little cooler to the north and to the west. That is where we've had some of those storms move through some uh, some storm cool there. Temperatures so remain mild in a lot of spots. This will be overnight. We'll talk more about this main line as it marches in through the overnight hours, how you can stay alert and when we're in the clear. It's all coming up in your Fox 17 code red forecast. I'm gonna let it shine. Bit of chaos at the state capitol today after a state trooper puts a woman opposed to a bill that would let Tennessee teachers go armed in a police cruiser after some tense moments inside the house. Fox 17 News Kylie Walker tonight showing us what happened and what's driving that tension. That's right, a chaotic day inside of the Capitol. Now, I was actually sitting right behind the woman who got arrested, so I saw it all go down from start to finish. Now, by the looks of the signs that they were holding, it looks like they were not happy about the school voucher bill, as well as the bill to allow teachers to carry firearms. Yelling immoral budget along with other chants, state troopers escorted this group off the gallery, with most leaving on their own. The legislature just has a While the woman in the orange shirt said, I'm not leaving, she claimed she was being quiet. The back and forth between her and state troopers went on for over nine minutes, where they told her, You'll be arrested if you do not leave. Shame! Shame! As you can see here, she eventually was taken away by the troopers with a group chasing behind. Let her go! Let her go! This later led to a sit in on the ground level at the Capitol in protest of the woman's arrest. This is where people sat outside the door she was taken into. Several Democratic lawmakers came down as well, including State Rep Justin Jones. They're trying to get clarity. Just as to, you're going to talk to these people and to go into jail. I'm not talking. But the woman was later taken away in a trooper's SUV. It's unacceptable. Um, Allison should not be arrested. No one should be arrested. And after the House session, State Representative William Lamberth weighed in. While we were voting on uh, actual bills that make a difference at the state of Tennessee, I noticed that both the Justins fled the chamber and decided to go outside and participate in protest instead of actually doing their duty that they were elected to. With State Rep Justin Pearson responding. This is why the actions of this General Assembly are so concerning. It is because it is the erosion of people's rights, of citizens' rights in, in this body. After this, only one person remained on this side of the gallery. Keep in mind, hours before this all went down, we found out that the House session for tomorrow would be canceled, so this is not connected in any way to the protests. For now, reporting at the Capitol, Kylie Walker, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. 
Crisis in the Classroom is our ongoing commitment to expose problems in our schools and to look for solutions. If you have a story you'd like to see us cover, send an email to news at fox17.com or call our tip line 615-266-4149. In Operation Crime and Justice, a Nashville preschool teacher is accused of threatening a couple of co-workers and bringing two guns to the school campus. Metro Police say 29-year-old Shanika Coward threatened two workers at the Academy of McCrory Lane, a preschool in Bellevue. Officers say they found one gun in her purse and another in her car. Also at the state capitol today, both the House and Senate passed budgets that include $144 million for school choice. The problem is lawmakers have not passed bills outlining how that voucher money would be spent. After several hours of wrangling on the House floor today, members pass a $52.8 billion state budget. That's $10 billion less than last year. We were able to continue to uh, invest in our K-12 education and our social services. We added to K-12 uh, education to TISA funding over $261 million that will pay for increased retirement insurance. That money means starting teachers will make $44,500 a year, keeping the state on pace for $50,000 by 2027. This budget also includes $144 million for school choice or vouchers. If no voucher bill is passed, that money would be at the disposal of the next legislature. But House leaders aren't ready to give up. We're still working on that. I get it as the days kind of wane toward the end of session here, but I noticed there's about 16 senators that just got signed on as co-sponsors uh, today to that bill. And so we're continuing to talk to our members, continue to talk to the Senate. State Senate also passed a budget today. It contains $1.5 billion for franchise tax refunds. That's twice as much as the House version. Senator Ramesh Akberry says it's the first budget she has ever voted against. Um, we look at a budget that provided one of the largest tax rebates for corporations that this state has ever seen uh, in a time where people are struggling, uh, Main Street is struggling. We decided to give over a billion dollars to companies that are traded on Wall Street. Now, the state house budget also includes money to hire 60 new Tennessee state troopers. It's the third year in a row for additions to the THP. These competing budgets now headed to a conference committee to iron out the differences. We want to know what you think. Should state lawmakers put off making a decision on school vouchers this session? We've got 128 votes so far. 62.5% say no. 37.5% say yes. The poll's live right now to cast your vote. Just scan the QR code there on the right-hand side of your screen to weigh in, and we will update the results for you later. In crime and justice, a man who caused the crash that claimed the legs of Smyrna High School volleyball star Janae Edmondson in St. Louis is now headed to prison. A judge there sentenced Daniel Riley to more than 18 years today. He was found guilty of second degree assault and driving without a license. The victim in this case, Janae Edmondson, was in St. Louis for a volleyball tournament. When she was hit on the sidewalk, the judge denied Riley's request for a new trial. Also in Operation Crime and Justice, police in Murfreesboro are asking for the public's help to locate a couple of accused shoplifters. Take a look at the images here from surveillance video. Police say this duo struck three times, twice at Bed Bath, or I should say Bath and Body Works, and once at Sephora, the makeup store. Officers say they made off with more than $2,000 worth of products. If you recognize either one of them or know where they are, call Murfreesboro Police. Poor Tennessee counties that had no chance to buy state-of-the-art metal. Classic Fords here, 1967 Ford Fairlane GT, 1965 Mustang GT. Come see us at Baseball in Tennessee, but we'll take anything that don't eat. Fox 17 News Farrier Files is sponsored by Bart Durham Injury Law. Imagine state-of-the-art metal detectors in every school system in Tennessee. A bill to make that happen, putting at least three portable detectors in every county in the state, appears to have strong support. Fox 17 News' Dennis Ferrier with the story in tonight's Ferrier Files. Not just metal detectors, smart metal detectors, portable metal detectors, metal detectors that can be moved to meet a threat. But see, you can take it 
outdoor football game. A metal detector, like nothing you've ever seen. Right, so all you have to do is you walk up to the machine, you press the button right here, and it turns on, that's it, it's ready to go. It is completely portable. So that you can take it outdoors. Waterproof, indestructible, and state of the art. And you can take a bat and whack it. You're not gonna have any problems, but that's what it's designed for, durability. So you, it needs to work, it needs to be easy, and it needs to be durable. It is exactly the kind of metal detector designed for today's needs, exactly the kind of metal detector that poorer Tennessee counties can't afford. Former Tullahoma Mayor Steve Cope. But there's a lot of distressed and at-risk counties in Tennessee that just don't have the resources. I think it's important to do everything we can do to keep our, our children as safe as possible. This is why State Senator Janice Bowling wrote a bill that would make metal detectors like this available to every county in the state of Tennessee for the drastically reduced price of $17,000 each. It is reasonable and it's very affordable. Uh, I have six rural counties in my district and so $17,000 that the state will create that fund that would be wonderful for them to be able to apply on an as-needed basis because some schools might need them. The new law would cost taxpayers seven million dollars but in a 50 billion dollar budget Senator Bowling and others feel seven million is a bargain. A bargain if it stops one school shooter. Because some might need three and others might need 20 and at seventeen thousand dollars for a metal detector that had so many of the attributes that it, the way it was put up it was very easy to transport, very easy to modify, very easy to add other uh, systems to it so that you would be able to have that deterrent as well. The state would only offer metal detectors that are state-of-the-art like the Vigil 5 in Tullahoma. Metal detectors you can move between schools if there is a new threat. Metal detectors where you can add things like face recognition or weapons detection. You can use them in the courthouse or a contentious school board meeting. Take them to a football game, you get the point. Because there is no place safe from the threat of violence, not anymore. It's a shame to see the violence that, that we have today, but it's also shameful if we don't try to do all we can to, to keep children safe in schools. This potential law is stuck in finance, but it has a possible life. If Governor Lee is interested in using this particular mechanism to fund his safety in schools, which was one of his babies all year. I'm Dennis Ferrier, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Fox 17 News Ferrier Files is sponsored by Bart Durham Injury Law. All right, Dennis, thank you for that. Back to the weather now. Katie, we've been warning people two days in advance. However, as we get closer, the timing you say has changed a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's always uh, kind of a, a fluid situation, and it uh, looks like now the main line has been delayed an hour or two before it even gets to Tennessee. So what I've done is show you where that main line is, and it's still back in Missouri at this point. It's been pushing through the Cape Girardeau area. That's a tornado warning, in fact, that's in, a, in effect right now. Now, I'd still think that the better ingredients for severe weather with this event are still in Missouri, southern Illinois, and western Kentucky. That's where the current watch is in effect. This is a severe thunderstorm watch. I do want to note, too, that two more counties have been added to the watch just in the past five minutes. Henry County and Benton County in our viewing area have now been included in that severe th thunderstorm watch until 2 o'clock. This, I still think, is, is pretty good as far as the watch is concerned. I would not expect it to extend into Middle Tennessee. At least that's the way it's looking right now. However, we need to make sure that we are staying aware, especially since we're going into the overnight. So the bottom line for tonight here, the main line is likely delayed now until about midnight or after that, moving into Tennessee. So it'll still be a few hours before it gets here. The line, I'm still expecting it to weaken as it moves into the area. We just don't have the better ingredients this time around for severe weather. As I mentioned, though, we need to make sure we're staying alert, at least have those ways to get alerts if uh, need be as we head through the overnight hours uh, because uh, we're in that overnight time period. So let's walk you through future track here. We have not had too many thunderstorms with this first batch moving through. Uh, we have been looking at a couple with heavy rain. 
gusts of wind. We even had a report of quarter size hail, but we walk you through the timeline. This is 12 midnight. A few more showers. These are going to be pretty isolated in nature and really aren't going to be too much trouble as far as severe weather goes. That main line is going to be where if we were to see severe weather, that's where it's going to be. And that's right here. Now notice future tracks still not really on board with an, a real organized line of severe weather. I think as we head after about 1, 2 a.m., you can really sort of make out here this rough line of thunderstorms starting to push into the area. We're still going to get rain. I think a, a good amount of us should get some rain, some thunder, maybe a gust of wind here or there, but most of these should be below severe limits. As we go further into the morning hours, you can see those uh, pockets of rain even for the Friday morning commute. It'll be a rainy start to the day, but as we get into the afternoon hours, we will start to see more of that sunshine. So starting off in the morning, I'd say even up to about noon, we'll have a mostly cloudy, if not overcast sky. Our temperature right around 64. Most importantly, though, if you have plans for tomorrow, we are dry. So I do not see rain in the forecast. Best chance for showers would be very early while you're sleeping overnight tonight or very early as you're getting ready to go to work. 68 our temperature by 2 o'clock and topping off in those low 70s for the afternoon. So overall Friday not looking too bad for tonight. We will continue to see the threat for some scattered thunderstorms. This is becoming truly an overnight event for us, though. Most of this will be coming in as you're sleeping. Temperature right around 60 and again, a couple could be on the strong side. I still think that better threat for anything strong is going to be west of 65 for this evening. So folks west of 65, uh, especially out towards the Tennessee River and up towards Kentucky, please make sure you do have those ways to stay alert. Stray shower early. Otherwise, we're clearing out for Friday. Temperature should top off in those low 70s. We'll continue to track the radar, some of these other showers that are around, and we'll look ahead to the weekend, how things are looking. Some change on the way. I'll have that for you coming up. Katie, thank you. Straight ahead, thinning the herd. We will talk to mid state farmer Mitchell Kalinski about closing in on the one on the hit Fox show, Farmer Wants a Wife. Hey there, hope you're having a great night. I'm Fox 17 News anchor Jennifer Waddell. We're getting ready for the show tomorrow morning, and a story that we're taking a closer look at is uh, small farms that say they're now in big trouble. We're taking a look at how inflation is and 52 all nighters, the meticulously refined Tiguan. Get 0% APR financing or a $2,000 customer bonus on a new 2024 Tiguan during the Volkswagen 75th anniversary sales event. In entertainment news, we are checking back in with a Mount Juliet farmer who is competing on season two of Farmer Once a Wife on Fox. The show aired right before our newscast tonight. Foxville, Mitchell, glad to have you with us. Before we get into the show, you got to tell us the story about that UT Letterman's jacket over your shoulder there. Man, way to give me the chills and the tears. This is uh, my grandfather's Letterman jacket. 1956 SEC championship team played with Johnny Majors and uh, he was my idol. He's who got me into horses in the outdoors. So, um, yeah, it's pretty special. I love that. Glad that we got the Tennessee bona fides out of the way in case anybody was wondering. Now, on the show tonight, you took Kiana to Bellmead Winery here in Nashville for your last solo date. You ended up sending her home. Did that time together, you know, on the property in West Nashville seal it for you? You know, it definitely did. It just gave me a chance to uh, spend that extra time with her where I wasn't with the other girls and could focus on our relationship. Well, after the show tonight, you are down to two ladies on the farm. So, I mean, we are closing down, you know, on the on the end. Are you getting any better at sending these very beautiful and nice ladies home or is it getting harder? Oh, goodness. You know, it's I say it many times. It's not very fun. I hate saying goodbye, but, you know, for I was fortunate with these girls. They were great. So I hope a lot of them um, the ladies don't let you know how they feel. Obviously, they could be sent home. There's only two. Kate really stepped up on this uh, show with a letter telling you how she felt. And your mom likes her. How important is that? You know, it's really important for me. I've always heeded to my mother's advice. She gives me some really good stuff that I try to listen to. And uh, she raised me right, so I'm going to listen to her. And that meant a lot. Middle Tennessee, and I'm sure everybody in Mount Juliet and Wilson County are proud. And uh, we're eager to see how this uh, thing wins out. You've been a gentleman from the start, and thank you for doing this tonight. Man, it's an honor speaking with you. God bless, sir. Gotta like that. An award-winning mid-state teacher turned author. How he turns a family tragedy into inspiration for others. And as low as 2.25% or a great low lease. Toyota, let's go places.
This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by B.F. Myers Furniture. Right now we have breaking news as commercial airline flights overseas have started diverting their routes over western Iran without explanation. Although we do not have an official reason for those flight changes, Fox News is reporting right now Israel has reportedly begun retaliatory strikes against Iran. Such action would be a clear response to Iran's weekend bombing raid on Israel. Fox 17 News Matt Galka tonight with more on the growing tensions. Israel isn't backing down on its promise to respond to Iran's strike despite cries for de-escalation from world leaders. If we don't answer, the Iranians will feel impunity and they will feel that they can strike anywhere in the Middle East or elsewhere without any consequences. Iran continues to warn Israel over the anticipated response. A senior commander told an Iranian news agency the country could look to review its nuclear doctrine over Israeli threats. FBI Director Christopher Wray says the Bureau is on alert for threats to the Jewish community in America as the Passover holiday approaches. The Anti-Defamation League says anti-Semitic incidents ballooned in 2023, with almost 9,000 incidents of assault and harassment, a 140 percent increase since 2022. We at the Bureau remain particularly concerned that loan actors could target large gatherings, high-profile events, uh, or symbolic or religious locations for violence, particularly a concern, of course, as we look to the start of Passover on Monday evening. Congress has tried to pass multiple bills this week condemning Iran and supporting Israel. My resolution condemns the slogan, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free because it is blatantly anti-Semitic. That resolution passed with strong bipartisan support, but was opposed by 43 Democrats and one Republican. The liberal so-called squad members were among those voting against the measure, including Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, who said she wouldn't support any of the messaging bills until there's a ceasefire in Gaza. This is why we must achieve an immediate permanent ceasefire that includes an end to the genocide in Gaza. The U.S. hit Iran with new sanctions on Thursday, targeting its drone program and some steel companies. It's an effort to cut Iran off from the weapons they used to try and strike Israel. In Washington, I'm Matt Galka. In your community tonight, a Williamson County school teacher's personal memoir about the murder of his grandfather and how it impacted his family. That book has recently been added to the collection at the Museum of Appalachia over in East Tennessee, which is affiliated with the Smithsonian. Joining us now to talk about that book is the author Robert Hawkins. Robert, glad to have you with us. If you will, briefly tell us about your grandfather's life how he died, but more so, and I guess more importantly, how this book of matches is really an inspirational story. Yes, sir. So my grandfather survived the Great Depression and World War II and only to be murdered on his own property when my mom was nine months old and his uh, other daughter was three and left my grandmother uh, obviously in a very difficult situation. But the inspiration behind it, her being the protagonist, she was able to, uh, with her grit and determination, see everything through. So. For people out there, I think that the message that's been resounded with our readers is basically that you can just about overcome anything and life is going to definitely go on. And you have to remember the world was a very different place for women back then and uh, that's part of, I guess, the overcoming. Why did you choose the title you did, A Book of Matches? Well, my grandfather had been lured away from his house after having a Sunday school party and um, she, you know, was in the house still and he had taken the... And um, about 30 minutes passed, she put the babies in the crib and then basically took a book of matches out and struck them across their property and just about stepped on him. I can almost see this playing out. Now, Robert, you mentioned uh, the murder. This case actually resulted in a death penalty conviction. And uh, in the reading that I did, uh, it actually became something of a landmark legal case and went to the Supreme Court not once but two times. Why was that? Well, the first one was tried by three judges, and they invicted the man with the death penalty, first one in that county, because um, it was a new technology. Um, people are going to have to read the book to find out why it went two times to the state Supreme Court, because I don't want to give it away. 
All right. Now, I know you researched this for five years, took two more to write it. Now all that work's paying off in conversations like this. And I know you have an upcoming book signing in our area. And we should tell people performance because in addition to being an author and a teacher, you also write music and sing. Yes, sir. So on Saturday, April the 27th, I'm going to be at the um, Nolensville Feed Mill Old Time Country Store. I'm going to be doing not only a book signing, but also a live pop-up concert. And I've been doing that on my book tours um, in both Kentucky and Ohio. So the um, Darren Chef, who owns it, he, he was kind of jealous. <laughs> I used to play music out there a lot. And he's like, you need to come back and see us and do this again. Oh, I think that's nice. Well, to learn more about Robert's book and that upcoming book signing on the 27th, you can check out his website. It's easy, robhawkins.com. Robert, thank you for doing this and continued success with that book. Thank you, Scott. Always great to talk with you, sir. Our code red alert continues as we track the potential for severe weather later tonight. Again, it looks like it's been delayed now till at least midnight, if not after. Things are quiet here on Broadway and quiet across all of Middle Tennessee at this point. We take a look, though. A few showers have been pushing through here. These are non-severe at the moment. Earlier, we did have a severe thunderstorm warning move through Cheatham and Robertson County, dropped some quarter-sized hail. Just in the past 30 minutes, we've had two more counties added to the watch. Henry and Benton County, this is a severe thunderstorm watch in effect until 2 a.m. A little closer here, you can see some intense rain and lightning with these storms. But generally, as we go through the overnight, I expect this line to weaken. It is still going strong, though. This is a look at where it's at right now, and you can see the extension of the watch in the past uh, 30 minutes or so. So as we head towards midnight, this line should be approaching Middle Tennessee and we'll move in. We will still get rain overnight and lightning. In fact, as you can see the storm timing going into the overnight hours, you can uh, see more in the form of uh, showers and thunderstorms uh, more into the overnight. So again, we'll be watching this line closely as we head through the next couple of hours. Uh, one more look at the radar here. Pretty intense line. Most of the severe weather as expected today has been in the boot heel of Missouri into Illinois and parts of Indiana, Western, Western Kentucky. We'll talk more about what we can expect as we head towards the weekend. That in your Fox 17 Code Red forecast. Katie, just ahead, Predators prime for a playoff run when they will face the Canucks. It's available in three varieties. Parties, goodness in the making. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by Eurostone. Stanley Cup playoffs are right around the corner for the Nashville Predators, and we now know that their first round series against the Vancouver Canucks will start on Sunday. Preds will be on the road the first two games, so Sunday's opener will be in Vancouver, and then the series will return to Smashville for games three and four. Now exactly when that is, we still don't know yet, but we do know there's a Tim McGraw concert Thursday night at Bridgestone Arena, so it won't be on that night. By the time the Preds first game rolls around on Sunday, the team will have had five days off since their season finale, so plenty of time to rest, recover, and rest some more, which the veterans say is really not a bad thing this time of year. Once it starts, it's especially too if we're going to Vancouver. It's gonna be a lot of traveling, a lot of roads, so it's I think it's a great opportunity, especially for you know the older guys to kind of you know, have this time at home and, and heal up and kind of get that that jump back because it's uh, you know we know the toll of playoffs. It's uh, you need every possible ounce of energy, and it's gonna be fun. Now the Preds faced the Canucks earlier in the season, losing in all three of those games. However, that was before the start of the new year, and this is a completely different Predators team. Well, every so often, the sports world collides with the real world. And while game day seems like the most important day of the week, there are always more impactful events and more important people. Tonight's rally on the runway is an example of that. Ten different Titans players, including defensive lineman Jeffrey Simmons there, taking time out of their busy offseason to help give back to a special cause. Rally on the Runway helps raise money for childhood cancer research and also gives back to kids that have survived or are battling cancer themselves. Now the event pairs a Titans player with a rally kid and the two get to strut down the runway and show off their dance moves and handshakes. It's obviously a memorable night for the rally kids and a friendly reminder that life is bigger than just sports. We think football is hard, but you come in here with these kids and you just see smiles on their face and knowing that they're dealing with 
so much bigger than the game of football and the hardship we going through. Their life is real hard right now, either fighting cancer or then have beat cancer. So, um, you know, this this is an unbelievable thing they're doing with Rally, and like I said, I'm always excited. The event raised over 570,000 for childhood cancer research last year. For more information on Rally on the Runway, visit our website, fox17news.com. And history made for Tennessee State University today as the Tigers announced the hiring of their first ever hockey coach, Dante Abercrombie. TSU first announced that it would be starting a hockey program last year, becoming the very first hockey team at a historically black college and university. And Coach Abercrombie will be the first to lead the Tigers on the ice in their inaugural season this fall. So exciting news. Jill Johnlick, Fox 17 Sports, your Code Red Station. Coming up, talking more about our severe threat as we head through the overnight, we'll have the latest look at where the line is and where it's moving to in your Fox 17 Code Red forecast. A longtime NPR editor resigns. He says the organ... For a $2,000 customer bonus on a new 2024 Tiguan during the Volkswagen 75th anniversary sales event. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by Electronic Express. We make it happen. A longtime senior editor at National Public Radio quits amid concerns about journalistic integrity. As Fox 17 News Kayla Gaskins explains, he says NPR is leaning left. You can let us know what you think by scanning the QR code that will appear on your screen. A 25-year senior editor of NPR handing in his resignation this week, blasting the news organization for extreme liberal bias. The resignation coming after NPR management suspended Yuri Berliner for a scathing piece published by the Free Press, where he slammed NPR for abandoning journalistic values. And I think that there are a lot of journalists now who feel like they are obligated to do stories that um, that that are aligned with their sense of justice. Berliner writing, NPR has always had a liberal bent, but during most of my tenure here, an open-minded, curious culture prevailed. He laid out examples of how that changed following Donald Trump's election, citing the poor handling of the now-debunked Russian interference story, the turning of a blind eye to Hunter Biden's laptop, and the far-left slant of COVID-19 coverage. We've been too reluctant, too frightened, too, too timid to deal with these things, and I think that uh, this is this is the right opportunity to bring it all out in the open. In response, NPR's executives say they stand behind their organization's exceptional work. Berliner also going after NPR's new CEO, Catherine Marr, writing her divisive views confirm the very problems at NPR I cite in my free press essay. Marr is very open about her politics, tweeting out photos, wearing Biden campaign hats, and calling Trump a racist. Although she's not a big money donor, data shows she gives exclusively to Democrats. I don't sit in our newsroom discussions. Mm. Um, I know that, though, in walking around the building, the, the editors and the journalists that I have met have been absolutely rigorous and committed to upholding a strong culture of inquiry. All of this sparking a renewed push by conservative lawmakers like Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn to defund public broadcasting. Berliner says despite his criticism, that is not something he supports. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. During the story, we linked you to a QR code that took you to a poll asking if you think Congress should continue to fund public broadcasting. Nearly 300 people have weighed in and uh, nearly 67% of them say no, just over 33% th uh, say yes, they think they should continue funding public broadcasting. Our thanks for all who took time to vote. Katie? Scott, we continue our Code Red Alert tonight, tracking the potential for severe weather. Now likely after midnight here, things are quiet from Metro Center and we'll stay that way for another hour or two before we start to see those storms um, move in here. And as I mentioned earlier, we had the small cluster of showers and storms push through a stray shower now pushing through uh, Dixon and Dixon County. And uh, these have generally been moving to the north and to the uh, east. The severe thunderstorm watch for those in our southern Kentucky counties and uh, for Henry and Benton County in Tennessee. That 
goes until 2 o'clock in the uh, morning. And it's all because of this line back to the uh, west. This is our main line. And as I mentioned, it's been delayed a little bit, probably not reaching Middle Tennessee until closer to midnight now. And still going strong. We still have some severe thunderstorm warnings. These red boxes are tornado warnings. The tornado threat as we head through the overnight hours, it's going to be pretty small, especially as the line continues to move into Middle Tennessee. I expect it to weaken. However, this is a pretty good idea for the overnight hours to make sure you have those ways to stay alert uh, going into early Friday. So we want to shift our focus now to the weekend. What's coming? Uh, a cooler weekend. Temperatures will be a little cooler. In fact, a lot cooler uh, by Sunday. We're sitting at 52, 8 o'clock, 65 by 12 noon, upper 60s by 4. And for Sunday, we'll be looking at a partly to mostly cloudy sky. Those temperatures right around 48 at 8, 56 by noon, and uh, right around 60 for the afternoon high, so much cooler than where we've been. Now we walk you through here the next couple of days. All of uh, what we're seeing tonight is along a frontal boundary that will push through as we head into Friday morning. Gradually we will clear as we head through the day and into Friday night. Early Saturday morning, I think we're going to keep skies partly to mostly cloudy. Right now only looking at a stray shower chance. However, models have been kind of flip flopping on whether or not we see rain at all or uh, if we see some rain or none at all. Uh, this is 6 p.m and you can see a couple stray showers mainly along and south of I-40 and then going into Sunday slightly better chance for showers possible. So I've kept 20% chances for rain in for both days this weekend. Just keep just note that it may change between now and the weekend here uh, as models continue to have a little bit of trouble figuring out where this rain is going to be. But for now, it looks like the bulk of it should be south of us. We may just be on that edge. Uh, where we have a, a couple of those showers around uh, temperatures as we head into tomorrow. Still nice. We're sitting at about 72 in Nashville, Franklin, Smyrna and Murfreesboro and up to Springfield looking at the upper 60s. We are gradually cooling as we head towards the weekend into those upper 60s for Saturday and right around 60 by Sunday. By the way, it's looking right now beyond uh, tonight. Showers and storms hard to come by. We may find some pop ups this weekend and then as we head towards early next week, looking at maybe a stray shower at best. Send off brand name closeout mattresses or get a queen mattress for just $30 a month. Plus, get a free box spring with any mattress purchase for better sleep and savings. Shop Ashley today. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by Eurostone. In the economy tonight, Tennessee's unemployment continues to fall. In January, the rate was 3.5%, uh, really pretty good when you think about it. In February, that number fell to 3.3%, so clearly the state moving in the right direction. And the very latest figures just out from last month show the unemployment rate in Tennessee now dropping again, this time to 32 Tennessee's all-time low unemployment rate is 3.1%, which the state recorded during the last three months of last year. Cosmetic danger, what you need to know. Go to the Game Center on our website and you can win money. It's your journey. Own every mile in the new Hyundai Elantra with America's best warranty. Lease an Elantra for $199 a month or get 3.89% APR or 1,000 bonus cash. Visit your local Hyundai dealer today. In health news tonight, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta is investigating harmful reactions linked to counterfeit or mishandled Botox injections. The CDC says it has seen reports from 19 people in nine states, including Tennessee. This comes after these people received injections from someone who was unlicensed or untrained or in a non health care setting like a home or a spa. Nine of these 19 people were hospitalized. Reported symptoms include blurry or double vision droopy eyelids and difficulty uh, breathing and swallowing. At least four of those 19 cases are from here in Tennessee. 
On this week's full measure, a whistleblower is claiming taxpayers' money is being wasted in a bribery scheme involving a VA hospital in Kansas. These claims resulted in a lawsuit against Medtronic, the world's largest medical equipment company. The whistleblower says doctors and other staff at the VA Medical Center in Wichita, Kansas, bought an excessive amount of unnecessary medical devices from the company at taxpayers' expense. For its part, Medtronic and others uh, involved in this case uh, who are accused of wrongdoing say that they've done nothing wrong. To see more on this story, watch Full Measure with Cheryl Ackeson Sunday morning, 7.30, right here on Fox 17. Congress putting TikTok back on notice. I'm Atrel Nishar with lawmakers' new strategy to force a sale or ban TikTok, they say, to protect national security. This is Fox 17 News at 10, your code red station. First on Fox, we're in code red, our eyes and ears on the radar and skies tonight, watching the clouds and strong storms rolling in. You can see one of those waves here in this time lapse uh, video of one of our viewers, Jared Ambrose. This video well, was taken in Castilian Springs, just east of Gallatin along Highway 25 in Sumner County. Those are impressive clouds. Fox 17's uh, in code red now. Our weather alert includes the possibility of damaging wind and hail before morning. Let's get right to our chief meteorologist, Katie Morgan, who's been tracking this storm, which has slowed a bit. A little bit. It looks like the delayed time now will be about midnight before it moves into Middle Tennessee. So truly an overnight event now that we're talking about here. The Syrian thunderstorm watch is in effect until 2 a.m. for Southern Kentucky counties and for Henry and Benton County in Tennessee. And at this point, I don't expect an extension of the watch, but doesn't mean that it won't happen. So I uh, want to make sure that you still have those ways to stay alert as we go through the overnight hours. But hail and wind are the primary threats with anything that moves through. We've had a few showers push through over the past couple of hours. Not much, though. The main line is still going to be what we are watching intensely as we head through the overnight. Uh, a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings up in portions of Indiana and in, uh, Indiana now and into uh, Kentucky. And then in the boot heel of Missouri, we've been tracking a few tornado warnings move through the Cape Girardeau area. So we'll continue to monitor these storms as of now. Things quiet here from our South Nashville camera and overnight still mild temperatures sitting at 60 degrees here in Nashville will be in those mid to upper 50s up towards Clarksville, Hopkinsville and low 60s for McMinnville and Murfreesboro. We'll talk more about a cooler pattern that is moving in and how long it's expected to be with us coming up in your Fox 17 code red forecast. Katie, thank you. Right now, breaking news as Israel has reportedly begun retaliatory strikes against Iran. You can hear air. You can hear the air sirens there, seeing flashes in the night sky. Video just in to Fox 17 News. CNN is reporting an explosion heard in a northwestern city in Iran. Iranian State TV there reporting an explosion near the central part of the city. Commercial airline flights in this area have reportedly been diverted. This comes on the heels of Iran's missile and drone attack against Israel about a week ago, a little over that. We have developments on this breaking news story overnight for you on our website website, fox17.com. Continuing coverage now on the state legislature as both houses and the uh, House and Senate there passing budget bills today. They contain $144 million of school vouchers, despite the fact state lawmakers have not yet agreed on how that money would be spent. There was a little back and forth today on the House floor today before a $52.8 billion spending plan was approved. Highlights of that budget include uh, another $261 million additional dollars for K-12 education. If no voucher bill is passed to direct those dollars that we talked about for that, that money would go back to the general fund, but Governor Lee could also call a special session to force this issue. Look, there's going to be all kinds of rumors and speculations. There has been no discussions about that. Now, would the governor call us in? That's his duty. It's his right, but he would discuss it with us, so there's been no discussion about that. The budget doesn't actually prioritize the Tennessee public at the end of the day. It is. It includes one of the largest handouts to corporate entities 
that any state has ever done it. That's Nashville State Senator Jeff Yarbrough talking about the franchise tax rebate in both of these budgets. The Senate would return $1.5 billion to Tennessee businesses over three years. The House version of the budget does roughly half that. Earlier in the newscast, we told you about our daily X poll tonight asking should state lawmakers put off making a decision about school vouchers this session. 151 people weighing in, 63% say no, 36% say yes. We will have a new X poll for you tomorrow night. Our thanks for all those who took part in this one. Continuing coverage at the Capitol now as protests erupt inside our state Capitol building after THP troopers escort a woman out of the gallery during the House session today. A group of people holding signs were not happy about the budget, specifically frustrated over the bill that would allow Tennessee teachers to go armed at school and, of course, the voucher bill we referenced. When they started chanting, they were asked to leave. All but one did. State troopers arrested that woman after nearly 10 minutes of back and forth. This is why the actions of this General Assembly are so concerning. It is because it is the erosion of people's rights, of citizens' rights in, in this body. While we were voting on uh, actual bills that make a difference at the state of Tennessee, I noticed that both the Justins fled the chamber and decided to go outside and participate in protest instead of actually doing their duty that they were elected to. After that woman was removed from the gallery, this uh, sit-in uh, sprang up on the ground floor of the Capitol. In Operation Crime and Justice, the driver who caused the crash that caused Smyrna High School volleyball star Janae Edmondson to lose both of her legs was sentenced earlier today. He's headed to prison. St. Louis judge sentenced Daniel Riley to more than 18 consecutive years. He was convicted of four charges, including second degree assault and driving without a license. Edmondson was participating in a volleyball tournament in St. Louis at the time of that crash. This week on Full Measure, a whistleblower is making claims of taxpayer waste and bribery at a VA hospital in Kansas. The lawsuit here involves a company called Medtronic, the world's largest medical equipment company. The whistleblower alleges doctors and other staff at a VA medical center in Wichita, Kansas, were buying and using an excessive amount of unnecessary medical devices from Medtronic at the taxpayer's expense. The incident was my new sales rep that I had hired in Wichita when I took over in 2015. He had finally gotten into the VA and he called me and he's like, Tom, it's all true. You gotta see this. There's hundreds and hundreds of these drug-coated balloons and atherectomy products on the shelf. So I drove down uh, the next day and we walked in there and sure enough, I took pictures. I'm like, this is insane. Medtronic and others named in this lawsuit deny they have done anything wrong. To see more of this story, you can watch Full Measure with Cheryl Atkinson. That's Sunday morning, 7.30, right here on Fox 17. Congress putting TikTok back on notice. I'm Stay Safe. Fox 17 News, your Code Red station. Alerts, empowers, protects. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by Tennessee Home Buyers. <laughs> Continuing coverage tonight as a potential TikTok ban is now back on the table on Capitol Hill. The House trying to tie legislation forcing the social media app sale to a foreign aid package. Fox 17 News Atra Elnashar taking a closer look at where things stand. A new strategy to force a sale of TikTok or see it banned could put it on a fast track to the president's desk. Good afternoon, everybody. As House Speaker Mike Johnson moves ahead with legislation to provide aid to Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan, it's expected to be accompanied by an updated bill to force TikTok to be sold from its Chinese parent company ByteDance or be banned in the U.S. The bill is passed. A bill on this already overwhelmingly passed the House last month and it's been sitting in the Senate ever since. Some key players like Commerce Committee Chair Maria Cantwell are now on board since the updated bill gives ByteDance more time to divest. In public, TikTok CEO Xiao Chu attempts to distance the company from the Chinese Communist Party. TikTok is a company that's now headquartered in Singapore and Los Angeles. Refuting warnings from the U.S. intelligence community that because ByteDance is based in China, the CCP can force it to hand over American user data to use against U.S. interests. Senator, we have not been asked for any data by the Chinese government and we have never provided it. A new report sheds light on China's efforts to keep TikTok running in the U.S. 
According to Politico, the Chinese embassy has been holding meetings with congressional staff in which they downplayed the national security concerns with TikTok and staffers tell Politico sought to claim the company as Chinese. The Chinese embassy did not deny the meetings occurred and told Politico it tries to tell the truth about the TikTok issue. Senate Intelligence Committee Chair Mark Warner tells us at this point it comes as no surprise that Xi Jinping is heavily invested in preventing a TikTok divestiture, which would put American data and TikTok's potential for malign influence out of the hands of the CCP. TikTok told Politico it was not aware of the meetings. But what's obvious to anyone who turns on a TV these days are TikTok's efforts to lobby the public with ad campaigns featuring the hashtag Keep TikTok, framing the app as a force for good instead of a threat to national security. On Capitol Hill, I'm Atrel Nashar. Making headlines tonight, mysterious power outages last night in four different states had law enforcement agencies scrambling because they'd lost 911 capabilities. This happened, uh, again, we say four states. Nebraska, its neighbor to the north, South Dakota, Nevada over here on the west coast, and Texas down south, large states all. The outages left millions of people unable to report emergencies. There's still no official word on exactly what caused the outages. This comes after warnings from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security concerning heightened cyber attack risks. The Federal Communications Commission is now investigating. New tonight, rock guitar legend Dickie Betts, co-founder of the Allman Brothers Band, has died. According to his longtime manager, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame member passed away at his home in Florida following a battle with cancer and COPD. Betts and Dwayne Allman both played lead guitar in the original Allman Brothers Band, helping to give that group its distinctive southern rock sound. Dickie Betts wrote and sang the chart-topping song, and you guys all know this, Ramblin' Man, from their platinum-selling 1973 album, Brothers and sisters. Dickie Betts was 80. Some good news tonight for the future. Possible new breakthroughs in the treatment of childhood cancer. And we continue to cover more ways to save big every day. Kroger, fresh for everyone. This Fox 17 This Morning newscast is sponsored by Xander Insurance. Chinese diplomats are reportedly meeting with congressional staff to lobby against a bill that would force the sale of TikTok. Two Capitol Hill staffers tell Politico the sit-downs were initiated by the Chinese embassy. TikTok says it's not aware of the meetings. Bills are advancing in multiple states, which could ban thousands of your favorite snacks. New York, Illinois, and Pennsylvania are introducing measures to ban 13 additives over suspected health risks. New Jersey and Missouri are considering this, too. Snacks that could be on the chopping block include Lucky Charms, Flamin' Hot Cheetos, Oreos, and Gatorade. There are concerns the food dyes in those products may cause health problems. And Amazon is selling its smart grocery cart technology to third-party retailers. A handful of Price Chopper and McKeever's market stores in Kansas and Missouri are testing them out. They track and tally up items using a combo of computer vision and sensors. A display on the cart adjusts the total price in real time. Amazon launched the cart in 2020 at its fresh supermarket chain. That's business in New York. C.J. Papa, Fox News. In health news tonight, researchers uncover some breakthroughs in the treatment of recurring cases of childhood cancer. Fox News' Jonathan Sari tonight with the story. When you find out your child has cancer, nothing else matters. Diana Jenner's three-year-old son, Logan, underwent three rounds of chemotherapy and a bone marrow transplant, only to see his acute myeloid leukemia relapse at the age of five. When cancers return, um, doctors usually uh, have a challenge in selecting treatments. It's like entering this gigantic maze. Researchers at Florida International University believe they found a way to eliminate some of the trial and error in cancer treatment. Combining DNA analysis with extensive drug testing, the scientists say they're able to see within days how small samples of a patient's living cancer cells respond to numerous potential treatments. We tested over 120 FDA-approved drugs directly on the patient's cancer cells, and we did that within a week. The lab collaborated with Logan's doctor to identify treatments that worked and eliminate those that did not. One of his medications is very toxic to the heart. 
And what our testing showed us was that the regimen without that medication worked just as well with the tumor cells as it did with it. In a peer-reviewed pediatric study published in Nature Medicine, only one of eight participants with advanced relapsed cancers saw improved health with standard treatment. But of the six children receiving... Logan, now eight years old and cancer-free for more than two years. I don't think my son would be here without this study. Although the small FIU study focused on children, researchers say their method also works in adults. They're conducting ongoing human trials with Cleveland Clinic. In Atlanta, Jonathan Seri, Fox News. In sports news tonight, NCAA athletes are now immediately eligible to play no matter how many times they transfer. This is potentially big. The league fast-tracking legislation making the change after a court order. State's attorneys general sued the NCAA last year, arguing essentially that transfers were being punished by having to sit out a whole season if they made a move. Others worry this could negatively impact recruiting and that fewer high school and junior college athletes will actually get signed because of the movement. This rule only in place for five sports. They include football along with men's and women's basketball. Katie? And our code red alert as we continue to track the potential for a few strong thunderstorms. Uh, I was just noting from the radar here, making a mental note that uh, good to see that our severe line here is no longer severe at the moment. Uh, we were looking at a few tornado warnings in Missouri, and uh, those have since expired. So I'm hopeful that that trend continues uh, over the next few hours, which we were expecting to we we're expecting to happen as we head into the overnight. That line generally weakening as it moves into Middle Tennessee, but it's just too close for comfort uh, to give you an all clear. Uh, at this point for sure. So we do have a severe thunderstorm watch here in effect for our southern Kentucky counties, Benton and Decatur, I should say Benton and Henry County until 2 a.m. So there is a watch out for some at this point. But again, as the line marches more into Middle Tennessee, we expect it to weaken. It is one of those events, though, where we still want to make sure that we remain alert. I do expect rain overnight, some lightning possible, rumbles of thunder, but the severe weather threat should slowly begin to uh, uh, to uh, wean as we head into uh, the early morning hours. It's also delayed as far as even getting to us. It doesn't look like it's going to arrive until probably midnight or just a little after that. So we take you through the overnight future track here showing uh, maybe a few other isolated showers. These will be non severe. We're going to need that front to bring us any sort of strong activity. And even at that, it's not looking too promising uh, for severe weather, which would be good news for us here. Here's 1 a.m. Future track showing a very broken and disorganized line of showers stretching from here all the way back into West Tennessee. And that'll be around 1, 2 a.m. Notice as we head closer to dawn tomorrow morning, we've got that line that's pushing through just some scattered showers at this point. Severe weather threat will be over by then. So tomorrow we'll look at a cloudy, sort of a rainy start to the day. And from there, we'll begin to dry out and clear out. I do expect some afternoon sunshine. Temperatures in the upper 60s here by 2 up to about 71 by 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, for tonight, some scattered storms possible for us. The best chance for severe continues to be in our northwestern counties and into southern Kentucky. As we head into tomorrow, temperatures should be around 72. Look for those showers very early in the morning, but should clear as we head into the afternoon hours. Now we look ahead to your weekend. Not looking too bad. It'll be a little chilly. In fact, 40 for the overnight low early Monday morning. That'll be 60 then on Sunday and then rebounding nicely as we head into next week. Temperatures back to the 70s with a few shower chances. And more. Don't miss out. Sale ends Sunday at 7 p.m. Electronic Express. We make it happen. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by the Nashville Preds. Cup playoffs right around the corner for the Nashville Predators and we now know that their first round playoff series against the Vancouver Canucks will start on Sunday. Preds will be on the road for the first two games so Sunday's opener will be in Vancouver and then the series will return to Smashville for games three and four. Now exactly when that is we still don't know yet but we do know that there is a very important Tim McGraw concert Thursday night at Bridgestone Arena so it won't be that night. Now by the time the Preds first game rolls around 
on Sunday. The team will have had five days off since their season finale on Monday, so plenty of time to rest, recover and rest some more, which the veterans say is not a bad thing this time of year. Once it starts, it's especially too if we're going to Vancouver. You know, the older guys to kind of you know, have this time at home and, and heal up and kind of get that that jump back because it's uh, you know we know the toll of playoffs it's uh, you need every possible ounce of energy and it's gonna be fun more on the rest of the pred schedule tomorrow at fox 17 news at 5 30. a special night for tennessee titans players tonight is 10 different titans including defensive lineman jeffrey simmons there taking time out of their off season to help give back to a special cause rally on the runway helps raise money for childhood cancer research and also gives back to kids that have survived or are battling cancer themselves now the event pairs a titans player with a rally kid and the two get to strut down the runway together and show off their dance moves and handshakes. It's of course a memorable night for these rally kids and also a friendly reminder that life is much bigger than just sports. We think football is hard but you come in here with these kids and you just see smiles on their face and knowing that they're dealing with so much bigger than the game of football and the hardship we're going through. Their life is real hard right now. Either fighting cancer or then have beat cancer so um, you know, this, this is an unbelievable thing they're doing with Rally, and like I said, I'm always excited. The event raised over 570000 last year for childhood cancer research, and they're hoping to exceed that number once again this year. For more information on Rally on the Runway, please visit our website, fox17.com. Jill Jolnick, Fox 17 Sports, your Code Red Station. A dangerous trend that appears to be spreading. I'm Liz Bonas. Counterfeit Botox. How do you know if you're getting the real thing? We explain just ahead. Those Sarah trucks, they drive me wild. In health news tonight, the Food and Drug Administration issues a warning about counterfeit or mishandled Botox after cases of harmful reactions in several states, including here in Tennessee. Fox 17 medical reporter Liz Bonus tonight shows us how to know if you're getting the real wrinkle reducer. Hey there, everybody. This warning coming after more than 19 women have reported unusual symptoms after getting Botox. Those who use this therapy say there is a lot we should know about this potential wrinkle reducer. It is a simple shot to reduce everything from frown lines to crow's feet on your face. I really love the way that it opens up my eyes and prevents me from creasing. Natalie Makita says she's been getting it every six months for years. Karen Whitney, a physician's assistant at Ohio's Advanced Cosmetic Surgery and Laser Center, is certified and trained to administer Botox. It interferes with muscle nerve communication, so it relaxes or, in extreme cases, paralyzes muscle. The Food and Drug Administration is warning that counterfeit versions of Botox have now been reported in several states. What's likely driving this counterfeit market? There's a demand issue and a cost issue. There are providers who'd like to take advantage of this and offer counterfeit Botox. So far, at least 19 women from nine states, including Colorado, Illinois, Kentucky, Nebraska, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Washington, have reported harmful reactions from this counterfeit Botox. The patients were all between 25 and 59 years old and experienced symptoms that are similar to what happens when the Botox toxin spreads to other parts of the body. Blurred vision, difficulty swallowing, shortness of breath. Some even had to be hospitalized for treatment with antitoxin medication. Karen says providers with the real thing purchase directly through FDA approved manufacturers. And you can tell it's real by the holographic labeling on it. 